Well, for more on the debate on the no-fly zone, we're joined in studio by Steve Clemens, director of the American Strategy Program at the New America Foundation. Good to talk to you once again. Good, good to good see you. Here. Yeah, good to see you in Doha. Why are you against a no-fly zone? Well, I think a lot of people, understandably, want to do something to help those protesters and people, the innocents, the unarmed uh, folks, in many cases, that are being slaughtered and killed and bombed by Muammar Gaddafi. My problem with the no-fly zone is that it doesn't fundamentally change the military equation very much. There are many other things that we can do to help the uh, opposition succeed, but more importantly, I think it changes the frame in the Middle East. I think even your director general talked about the importance of what we've seen in Tunisia and Egypt was accomplished without foreign intervention. When you basically have French and British and NATO and American uh, warships and planes fundamentally helping the opposition uh, uh, within that. The, the frame of all of our TV cameras changes to that. And I think you rob uh, these folks that are working so hard and are so inspiring of their own narrative of taking back their government. I want to help them, but I want to help them by giving them intelligence. I want to help them by selling, getting others to sell arms. Uh, there are other ways in which we can help make their their process more successful. Well, so you're saying it changes the framing of it and perhaps helps Muammar Gaddafi to frame it along the lines of a Western conspiracy, etc. Then why is it that the Arab League is supporting a no-fly zone? Well, I think the Arab League feels a lot of pressures. Not all of the members, including Yemen and Algeria and others who are, uh, at least Algeria has been far more supportive of Gaddafi. I haven't seen the, the uh, whether this was a consensus decision or whether it was a majority vote. Uh, but having the Arab League stand forward is an important gesture because you don't want to have them. But my view is, what do you do the day after uh, this begins? What if you have another Black Hawk Down-like uh, situation as we had in Somalia? You fundamentally change the dynamics both for all of the powers involved and I think you return this quest you return to this question of how does how does the Arab world, which is uh, where the narrative of humiliation at the hands of colonial powers in the West runs so rampant in this society, how does it fit then? And I don't think we have an answer to that. And I, and I also think that there's been a lot of play in Al Jazeera and everywhere that the Libyan opposition has called for the snowfly zone. My understanding is the Libyan opposition has asked for support in arms, has asked for support in scrambling Gaddafi's ability to communicate, has asked for other things. Mm. And I think those other steps can be far more well, efficacious well, than, than the snowfly I mean, zone. I don't think they have a completely unified voice because some national council members spoke to me and said yeah they yes. want surgical strikes they want a no-fly zone here's another way of looking at it uh, perhaps is it possible to impose a no-fly zone without the help of nato or the united states if the arab league and arab resources were out in front and using some of the systems that we've sold them in the past and were in front and we were providing backup and logistical support, to me, that would be some, some accomplishing something that would have much less of a Western footprint, and I think that would solve some of the political concerns that, mm. that I think many have uh, in this region and also help. But we have to remember, Iraq had a no-fly zone, and it did not change the fundamental equation of Saddam Hussein's control. Mm. Uh, we've, we've run to a no-fly zone because we feel emotionally we want to do something immediate on behalf of these people, and we think that will help. We need to look at the roster of other things that could be done that are more efficacious that can really help the opposition get rid themselves and rid that country of Gaddafi without as big a military footprint. That's all I'm calling for is fundamentally let's not rush to something that eventually undermines our partners and undermines the opposition we're ostensibly mm. trying to assist today. Steve Clemens, good to talk to you. Thanks Thank for you. your thoughts. Thank you.